everyone, this is Jessica with Black Travelers Network, where we provide trips that focus on the black experience in different parts of the world. And we cover news stories that happen in different parts of the African diaspora. Today's story comes to us from Angola. So before we get into today's story, I want to just give a quick context for why Angola is so important to the African diaspora. When you take a closer look at Angola, where it's actually geographically located, is located on the west coast, more like the west central coast of the African continent. It's bordered by three countries. One is the Democratic Republic of Congo, Zambia, as well as the country of Namibia. And so as a result of its location, when we think about the, hi the history of the African diaspora in different parts of the world, it's important for you to know that between the 1650s all the way up into the 1860s during the transatlantic slave trade, there were millions of Angolans who were kidnapped, taken out of Africa, enslaved, and their final destination was to Brazil. So in modern day Brazil, you can and will find a lot of Afro-Brazilians who have a, a history that can be traced back to Angola. Angola is also a country that was colonized by the Portuguese. And as a result of that, they speak Portuguese in not only Angola, but they also speak Portuguese in Brazil. And so that's definitely evidence of that history. And so many of the, the beliefs and the practices that you find today in Brazil can be traced all the way back to Angola, as well as parts of uh, the Congo was was also influential in Afro-Brazilian history and culture. And there are some other influences from other West African countries in Brazil as well. So as we talk about what's happening in modern day Angola today, over the course of time, I'll definitely make sure that I incorporate some of the more recent history in terms of Angola and its development since the transatlantic slave trade. So today's story comes to us from The Citizen. It's an online news source from South Africa. And the article is called Landmark Protests in Angola Targets Amnesty for Stolen Money. Despite the paltry turnout, the rally in the center of Luanda was a milestone and hugely symbolic. Such an event would have been unthinkable during the regime of former President Jose Eduardo de Santos, who ruled the oil-rich country with an iron fist for 38 years until he stepped down late last year. Some of the demonstrators held up portraits of de Santos' successor, Xiao Lorenciao, disfigured with red paint. They denounced a law adopted at the end of February providing amnesty to anyone repatriating more than $100,000 from overseas accounts in the coming six months. They will also not face questioning about the sources of the funds. Lorenzo has told Angolans to repatriate funds illegally held abroad in coming months or risk prosecution in a bid to spur domestic investment and combat corruption. The demonstrators shouted slogans such as, quote, give us back our money and thieves can't be bosses. The amnesty will benefit those who have illegally acquired riches, said protester Fernando Macedo, a university professor. After nearly 30 years of civil war came to an end in 2002, Angola's economy grew at a rapid pace thanks to the oil boom. But sweeping corruption, cronyism, and mismanagement has seen a huge chasm between the handful of haves and the overwhelming majority living in dire poverty. Fast forward to Euro News. So just to sum this story up really quickly, and it's 
to me it's a fascinating story because it really speaks to how quickly things can move when laws are changed to create pathways for grander plans to happen and take place but in a nutshell you know back in february the angolan government basically created a law that pardoned anyone who's bringing more than a hundred thousand dollars back into Angola over the next six months so these people who who do that they're not gonna face any questioning about where'd you get the money how'd you make this money before they created this law anybody who brought that kind of money into Angola would and could potentially be subjected to questioning. It's just amazing how no sooner than they announced that, all of a sudden Britain's National Crime Agency is saying, okay, we can send half a million dollars that's been frozen in the United Kingdom back to Angola. And it's as if they wanted to send this money back to Angola but they didn't want any questions and so now that the law has changed and opened the door for them to funnel a half a billion dollars back into Angola that money is now being funneled back into Angola and no one's asking any questions they're not trying to figure out where this money came from or how it came about because the law gives them cover to put the money in Angola and not have to answer any questions about where it came from and how it came about. Maybe this is an example of, you know, how money gets hidden in different parts of the world and and you know, they're not really saying who was the owner of this. They they're just saying that it was alleged that this half a billion dollars came about as a result of fraud um, against Angola's central bank, um, but now it gets returned. Just to be clear, Angola is a very important country when it comes to the world's economy. It's sitting on tops of boatloads of oil and many other natural resources that also come out of Angola. And when it comes to just the city of Luanda, which uh, is the capital, it has in the past been deemed like one of the most expensive cities in the world. A lot of people don't know that, that, you know, I'm not sure if it's still like that right now. If there's anyone who listens to this and you've been to Angola recently or you live in Angola, please clarify this point. But I know at one particular point in time in Angola, a cup of coffee could cost you as much as $10. And just to stay in a standard hotel room was as much as $400 a night. So it's a very expensive place, at least it once was, and it probably still is because it's one of the world's oil rich countries. And another thing that doesn't get talked about very often is that they have an amazing military that's very much well funded. They do, and in the past have had relationships with America's rivals, Russia and China, very deep relationships with those two countries and at one particular point in time you know they were actually considering allowing Angolan troops to fall under non-Angolan direction and the former president you know had some anxiety about that and you know it's just one of those countries that doesn't really get talked about too often but it has an amazing amount of resources you know not only does it have the oil in, in excess but it also has as many as a hundred million acres of land that was up for development uh, and you know it's just one of those countries that is a major player but no one ever really talks about and so I think we should definitely pay attention to uh, this story and and as well as the news that's coming out of Angola because what's important for us to remember is that right now they're at a point where they are working to try to stimulate their economy and it just seems like the perfect environment for people who want to hide money to hide their money in the Angolan banks. So with no questions asked. So how's that for some news? You want to hide your money? Looks like Angola may be a, 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 a spot to, to park your money. I'm being sarcastic about it, but 
it's it's definitely something to pay attention to in terms of who's investing and who has interest and holds interest in Angola. So thank you for listening and drop your comments below.